the full speed toothpick. And before you get uppity about the name, which I really do appreciate, I love my followers. Uh, it's totally okay. I'm going to make a statement about it at the end. But first, I'm going to talk about this quad. So this is one quad in this category that I've been working on. And um, this, this category has been around for a long time. It's just that recently electronics have gotten a whole lot better. It's gotten a lot easier to build and things have gotten a lot more reliable and the performance has just increased little by little to the point where we are at the level we are. If you look at my YouTube channel, I've been, I have been—I had a toothpick named frame about a year ago and I never came out with it because I didn't find electronics that were reliable enough to say that they were good. And I'm going to talk more about this in the next video, but let's talk about this quad in general. So the performance of this quad is really great, <laughs> really great. Anything of this size class with this kind of formula, it's going to perform really great. The difference with this one compared to the other ones, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about the general performance. So this is a 2S and a 3S quad. The video that I'm showing you right now flying around is actually the 2S flight. And I'm showing you that because it was a much easier flight. On 2S with a 450 million battery, the GMB battery, it's 72 grams, which is the perfect weight because I've said 73 grams and over is just too much weight for this class and it starts being limited. However, I'll get to that, the point that it's actually a little bit too much weight for this particular design. It'll come in a second. <laughs> and then with a 3S 450 milliamp battery, it is about 80 grams, which is a little bit heavy. However, on 3S, it has so much power. It's just unreal. It's almost uncontrollable. And really the main issue I had with this quad is that this canopy style that they use, which is a full speed kind of design, it 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 fits this Caddx micro camera in there. However, you can't really get enough tilt on the camera to fly it at 3S speeds. Now 3S is a bit faster than 2S, but things of this size really don't need 3S. On 2S, it's not really a whole lot slower. And that's for a couple of reasons. The main reason I think is because Things of this size are so light and so small that if you keep spinning the props faster and faster, it just unloads through the air and just keeps moving faster and faster. And that's where the weight limit really comes into play. If you're overweight, you're going to give it more and more gas and it's just going to be fluttering its props because it doesn't have the ability to go faster. It's just got too much weight to carry, too much drag on, on it, and the motors don't have enough torque to keep spinning the props faster and faster. However, as long as you're below a certain weight limit for the frame and the setup that you're using, you can keep adding KV and it'll keep going faster and faster without drawing a ton more amps. Now, of course, there is a limit to this. You can't just keep adding amp, uh, KV forever. But this quad on 3S is past that limit where it, you're not really getting a whole lot more performance and you're just getting the inability to fly because once you get past a certain point in the throttle, the props just start to flutter and they just can't go any quicker. Now the props on this quad that I'm showing you are actually pretty special. They're not the props that the quad came with. The ones that it came with are King Kong remakes that are well balanced and fit for 1.5 millimeter shafts. The props that it comes with are really, really tightly fit to the shaft. And these are also the Racer Star motors from 2014 that Full Speed loves using. They are 1103 8000 kV. They actually perform totally fine. They're definitely not the best motors. They are not the smoothest, they do have some vibrations in the motor itself, not necessarily the prop. And then they put the prop on top, which doesn't have the best balance. And the prop shaft, the hole is a little bit small, so it's really, really tight on the shaft. So if you do need to switch a prop, expect to need a tool or at least pliers to pull the prop off. You do need to be careful about pulling the shaft out of your motor. However, there is a C-clip underneath the, the motor, so it's not really that big of a concern, but it is definitely something I would think about because as I was getting the props off to put these props on, I felt like I almost broke a motor. Now, these props that I'm showing you, I'm going to again talk about it at the end, but let's continue talking about the quad. The frame is actually an eight and a half gram frame. This is the frame design. It's a stretch X, which would seem like a good idea, but I'll get to why it may or may not be a great idea in this particular size quad. It is a 1.5 millimeter frame, and that's how they got the weight so low with the canopy on top is because it's a 1.5 millimeter frame. They had some weight to spare. So this is kind of a lot of carbon surface area. And as you can see, the frame has been optimized as best they could. The arms are not 90 degrees to one another. So the, the carbon is not fully straight down the arm. The frame does have quite a bit of flex. And these little crossbars here, because the carbon is being crosshatched all the way across, 
They may or may not do a whole lot in terms in the way of durability, but regardless, I did crash this quad quite a bit, and it did hold up, and it does have a good amount of flex to it. It doesn't feel like it's going to break. I'm not really concerned about the frame breaking. The canopy is nice. Uh, it's nice canopy. I mean, it's TPU. It's it's just a nice canopy. Now let's talk about the stack real quick. So Full Speed has had a history of ESC issues with some of their previous quads where the ESCs would just burn out really easily. And so they've redesigned this ESC completely. The, the flight controller and the VTX is about the same. The v, VTX is actually a 20 by 20. A friend just told me today that making a VTX in 16 by 16 is really difficult because you essentially can't do any quality control because it's just too small. I don't really know what that means, but I'm guessing that might be why they went with a 20 by 20 VTX, and that's what they do on a lot of their quads, a lot of the micro quads that they've been designing lately. Um, the flight controller, I'm pretty sure we've seen before, it's an F4 flight controller. The ESC is new. It's supposed to do 3S or 4S and whatever amps. I would say that the ESC performance is not stellar. It's okay. It performs fine. It's, it doesn't give you perfect kind of throttle management. When you pump the throttle, you do get some dipping, even on Betaflight 4.0, which is fantastic at managing the dipping on the throttle. And uh, getting good tune on this thing is really difficult, and that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being the ESC, and the other one, which is the actual general layout of the frame and the way it's been designed. So in experimenting with these micros, which I haven't explained, I've learned that weight distribution is extremely important in quads of this size. And that also might be why a reason why we prefer, sometimes a lot of people prefer a stretch X design on a five inch racing quad. Now, what I mean by weight distribution is that this quad doesn't have everything stacked up in the middle, like a toothpick build or you know, a pod build where it's just everything is right in the middle. It has it spread out. It's got a camera out in front, it's got the stack in back, and everything is spread out. Things of this size have such little power that they really struggle to manage their own weight, let alone all the control inputs you're giving them to try and get whatever you want it to do to actually execute. So when you have weight that's distributed in any direction, anywhere, up, down, front, back, left, right, the motors have to work hard to just maintain that weight. The reason why the pitch, the, the P value on pitch has traditionally been higher than the roll is because typically we carry more weight in the front to back direction. So the quad requires a little bit more power or it, we tell it to use more power to manage its weight on the pitch direction because there's more weight to throw around. Now, when you move up to five inch, the motors have so much power and you have so much disc area on the prop that it's not really a huge matter when your weight is off. But when you're down to this size, if your weight is just a little bit off, it becomes a real issue. And that's also a reason why I run my batteries sideways on quads of this size. I don't run them front to back. It just seems to work out better. When the quad doesn't have to manage the pitch attitude so carefully, it seems to perform better. And I wasn't able to test that on this. I just didn't have time to test it. I'm sure it'll perform better if you do put the battery sideways because you're not putting so much weight on the front to back direction. But the reason I wanted to point this out is because the toothpick design, or generally the toothpick style design, the actual one, the one that I designed, is going to perform a little bit better than this quad. And I'm gonna show you that in the next video. And that's, I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, this is purely a guess based on my testing of a lot of these things now. It's because the whole weight of the quad is more focused in the middle and uh, the quad has an easier time managing its attitude in the air. So when you give it stick inputs, it has an easier time executing. Now, what do I think about this quad in general? I think that the happy model version of this class of quad, which is essentially the toothpick build, the board is upside down, the frame is an X, the camera is on top. The issue with happy model is that we've seen so many failures of the crazy V boards now that I would have a really hard time trusting the crazy V board. Now, that doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it won't work for you, it might work for you fine. However, I feel a lot more comfortable now having a stack that I can swap things out if I need to. And that's really the primary reason why I would recommend this quad over the uh, Sailfly from Happy Model is because this does have a totally separated out build. The weight is slightly more. I would say the motors that are on this quad are a little bit worse than the Happy Model 1102 motors because those are actually pretty good motors. 
And I would just recommend this because I think it's a better value. I think it's overall a better value than the Happy Model version because of all the things that I explained. Everyone's going to like when they fly this thing. They really, they, the things of this class really do perform great. I hope this was helpful. Um, next video is going to be fun. Something I forgot to point out about this is that it's using the CADEX SRD whatever, who knows what, in there. And unfortunately, I really like CADEX as a company. They really do listen and they try to make things good and better and the video quality is really stellar it really is good however their quality control and just the function of their cameras suffers this is just my opinion it's just one person's experience i've used about over a dozen of their cameras now and all of them almost all of them except for maybe a couple have had issues here and there now the i've recently reviewed the rattle rattel whatever i love that camera it is gorgeous it's my preferred camera even over the Eagle. However, I have run into that issue where the frame freezes. Now they say that they've tried to improve it or fix it or whatever, or try to isolate it even so they could fix it. And they have sent me a new batch, or a couple of new batch cameras that I'm testing. I haven't had any problems with them yet. However, I am very cautious because if I do fly my quad in a sort of sketchy situation where I might lose my quad or I might like hurt something like a fence or something, I don't want to risk any of that. So it's hard for me to even test because I don't I don't like to break my quad. I don't have time to rebuild it. So the issue I have with this camera is this is very similar to the issue I had with the other rattle camera, which is the screen sort of freezes on me. This time not in flight. When I crash, things just freeze and I don't understand why. Now I'm presenting this to, um, to CADEX and a lot of people have had great experience with CADEX and have had nothing like this that I've shown, but this has been my experience. Again, I really like Cadex as a company. They do make fantastic products, really great cameras. However, this issue makes me really concerned because I can't, I can't, I can't risk it. It's too unsafe to fly something where something like this can happen. Stand by. Uh, I, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my experience. We'll see what happens. But yeah. Also, I forgot to say, don't forget to floss. Take care. Bye.